What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now, when it comes to the Detroit Lions, a lot of people are indecisive whether they're going to be a good football team or a bad football team this year. I've seen record predictions as low as 3-13, and 13, and I've seen record predictions as high as 11-5. and 5. People just aren't very consistent about, about where the Detroit Lions are going to be. You know, some people have us winning the NFC North, some people have us picking in the top three. Like, it just... People are very indecisive when it comes to that. I personally think the Detroit Lions are going to make the playoffs this year. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the 10 reasons the Detroit Lions are going to make the playoffs in the 2020 season, assuming we do make it that far in the season and we do have playoffs. Now, before we do get into the video, if you are new to the channel and are enjoying the content, consider liking the videos and subscribing to the channel. It takes two seconds out of your day to make mine, and I'd be very, very appreciative to everybody that chooses to do so. But with that being said, let's get into talking about these Detroit Lions and why they are going to make the playoffs in the 2020 season. Now, getting into reason one, the Detroit Lions roster is the most complete in the NFC North. Now, the easiest way to make it to the playoffs is by winning your division, and to beat your division rivals, you have to be better than them and a more complete team. And I believe the Detroit Lions are that. They obviously have some holes at the guard position, but outside that, they're very, very solid. They have Matthew Stafford, a great quarterback. They have good running backs. They have good wide receivers and tight ends. They have a solid offensive line. They have a solid defensive line. They, they added a lot in the linebacking core and in the secondary this season. They put a lot of capital in to try to build up this roster and leave it with as few holes as possible. Now, they obviously have some holes at the offensive guard position, but those woes could very well be filled early in the season if Jonah Jackson and Logan Stenberg do end up stepping up or one of the veteran offensive lineman steps in and is even just a average at best offensive lineman now moving on to our division rivals you know the bears have a huge problem at quarterback they don't even know who they're going to be starting week one and that is going to be a huge problem because not only you know both those guys are going to be competing for the ones which means by week one the uh, the starting offense for the chicago bears is not going to have as many reps with the starting quarterback as many of the other of you know as anybody else in the nfc north you know we know rogers is going to be starting we know cousins is going to be starting we know stafford's going to be starting so they're all going to get reps with the one team and the backup quarterbacks are not the bears are going to be splitting first team rep or the bears quarterbacks are going to be splitting first team reps so by week one the bears offense is not going to be as familiar with their starting quarterback if it is nick Foles or if it is Mitch Trubisky because they are not going to have as many reps as the other teams in the NFC North. Now, the Green Bay Packers, we all saw their problems and holes last year. You know, with the run game against San Francisco, they could not stop anybody in that run game. And then they don't have really good wide receivers either that Aaron Rodgers could throw to outside of Devontae Adams, who couldn't even get to 1,000 yards last season. And then we go to the Minnesota Vikings, who have a lot of questions in their secondary. They lost, you know, four cornerbacks last year. They lost to safety and J. Ron Kirst. Like, their secondary is very, very young and, you know, could step up, obviously, just like we said with Jonah Jackson and Logan Stenberg, but the odds of their whole secondary being very young and stepping up right away is very unlikely, and they just lost guys like Everson Griffin and Linval Joseph on the defensive line, so that defense, you know, I think will be good in a couple of years when they have time to progress, they have time to learn the NFL and kind of adapt to it, but I don't think in the 2020 season they're going to be very good because they're going to be relying on a lot of young you know, a lot of young NFL talents that haven't really experienced the NFL yet. So I think that the Detroit Lions are the most complete roster in the NFL. And when you are the most complete roster, generally you are the one winning your division. Now, moving on to the second reason the Detroit Lions are going to make the playoffs, it's health. Now, the Detroit Lions last year had 15 players playing every single game last season, and several of those players are no longer on the roster. Now, some of the key losses include Matthew Stafford, Carrion Johnson, Marvin Jones, Tracy Walker, Darius Slay, Trey Flowers, along with many, many more names on that list that were going to be key contributors or in maybe even defining factors in the Detroit Lions success last season. Now the Detroit Lions are going to be healthier next season. Matthew Stafford is going to be back and hopefully is healthy. Carryon Johnson is going to be splitting carries and hopefully stays healthy. You know all of these guys are going to be come back and hopefully play more games because you know last season it was a freakish amount of injuries for the Detroit Lions and you know that most likely isn't going to happen again. Most likely the Detroit Lions are going to be healthy next year. They are going to have their star players out on the field more often than they had in the 2019 season. And when your star players are out there, when your key contributors are out there, your team is going to perform much, much better than when the backups are out there. Moving on to the third reason the Detroit Lions are going to make the playoffs coaching. Now, Matt Patricia is going into his third year of coaching, and generally, when you go into your third year, you have your team built, you have the guys there that you want, which we will talk about in a minute, but you know, you're just, you're more familiar with your team, you've built it up over the past couple of years, and you are ready to take that next step in advance. We saw with Kyle Shanahan last year, his first two years, very, very, you know, lackluster, he struggled a lot with the 49ers, and in his third year, he took him to the Super Bowl. You know, we see it all the time with coaches that in that third year, generally, they take a big jump, or if they are going to take a big jump, generally, they do in year 
year three, and Matt Patricia could very well do that in his third year of coaching. And then we brought in Daryl Bevel last season to be the new offensive coordinator. Now he's more familiar with his guys. He has more weapons. He's more familiar with the players in his system. He's going to put them in better better positions to succeed, as well as being able to advance the playbook a little bit more because most of the players that were there last year are returning as far as skill positions so he can even get more creative in the playbook because all the returning skill positions know the playbook front to back because they did it last year so he can add more to the playbook and make it more diversified in the 2020 season and then we brought in Corey Unlin who will be better than our previous defensive coordinator in Paul Pascaloni you know I don't know if him I don't know if Paul Pascaloni or Matt Patricia were the one were the ones calling the plays last year but bringing in, bringing in a new defensive coordinator especially one that is focused on the defensive backs when we're trying to rebuild that secondary is a very good thing and I believe our defensive coordinator and our defensive play calling will be different next year and it will be better than what we saw in the 20, 2019 season. Now moving on to the fourth reason and we talked about it a minute ago the defense has all of its pieces. The Detroit Lions this past offseason brought in guys like Danny Shelton, Jamie Collins, Deron Harmon, you know in years past they brought in Trey Flowers, they brought in all these Patriots and all these guys that have played in the New England system before and you know now Patricia has all of his guys. He has the guys that are going to play the roles that they, that he needs them to play and that's going to allow other players to be in the position that they are best suited for you know last year it felt like sometimes the players were put in positions where they weren't necessarily a, or they weren't necessarily good at you know like they just they weren't playing to their strengths last year some players at points and this year now that Patricia has all the pieces that he needs he's going to put every player in a position to succeed he's going to let every player play to their strength and that is going to help our defense and our defense improve tremendously in the 2020 season and I really really think that you know even though people harp on Patricia for bringing in Patriots it was a good move because now we have the people that know his system and can play in the spots that he needs them to play and that's going to allow the other Detroit Lions that have been here to play to their strengths in the 2020 season. Moving on to number five, the new and advanced run game. Now, the Detroit Lions put a lot of emphasis in the trenches when, since Bob Quinn's really got in here, but more recently in the last couple years and a lot in this past draft and offseason, you know, a lot in this past offseason. The Detroit Lions had key additions of Big V, Jonah Jackson, and Logan Stenberg, who are all really good run blocking guards and tackles, you know, for the Detroit Lions to have, you know, open up holes for the running backs to get through. And then they just drafted in this past draft, DeAndre Swift and Jason Huntley, who are both very, very good running backs. And Jason Huntley is a huge explosive guy. And DeAndre Swift is arguably the best running back from this class. So they've put a lot of emphasis into this run game with Carrion coming back, with Bo Scarborough coming back, you know, all of these running backs backs very very talented running backs and a new run blocking centric offensive line the run game is going to be much better next year and when the run game is better and you control the clock and you kind of dictate how long your opponent is on the field as well as you're you know hurting their defense throughout the game and you're scoring touchdowns with lengthy drives your team is going to be very very successful and I think that is what is going to happen next year with the Detroit Lions run game moving on to Moving on to number six, the Detroit Lions were very, very close last year, and they don't need to improve that much in order to be a successful team. Now, the Detroit Lions, as we all know, blew a lot of fourth quarter leads last year, and if they had held on to all their fourth quarter leads, they would have gone 10-6, and six, being second in the NFC North and actually making the NFL playoffs in the 2019 season. Now, the Detroit Lions last year had 12 different games decided by seven points or less. So they had 12 games where if they had scored a touchdown or they had held their opponent to one less touchdown, the game could have been completely different. It could have turned out completely different. So they were not that close. All they need to do is make one or two more plays a game to seal off those victories and to get us to be a successful franchise. And with the additions of the new guys, Jamie Collins and Deron Harmon and Danny Shelton and, you know, the new guys that we brought in in free agency in the draft, they're going to help us make those couple extra plays a game to help us be a successful franchise in the 2020 season. Moving on to the seventh reason the Detroit Lions will make the playoffs next year, the emergence of a great pass rush. Now, I made a video talking about the pass rush a couple days ago. It did very, very well, and, you know, a lot of people seem to agree with me that the Detroit Lions, you know, they brought in enough pieces to have a great pass rush this year. Obviously, we were very, very bad last year, ranking 20, or I believe we were tied for 30th in the NFL in sacks, but, you know, they brought in Jamie Collins. They brought in Nick Williams. You know, they brought in Danny Shelton to all help with the pass rush next year. And I truly think that with Danny Shelton taking up those double team blocks, leaving Trey Flowers and Julian O'Quara and Deshaun Hand and, you know, Jamie Collins and Jared Davis on one-on-ones or one-on-zero blocks. And, you know, some of those guys, when Danny Shelton's taking it up, leaves free shots at the quarterback, free shots and opens 
big lanes for the linebackers to shoot through you know our pass rush is going to be much much better next season and historically when the Detroit Lions have a dominant pass rush they are a successful team and make the playoffs so you know if we have a good pass rush which I expect us to have next season we're going to be successful because we're going to be getting to the quarterback a lot forcing a lot of mistakes forcing a lot of turnovers and not allowing a lot of points especially late in games like we did last season moving on to the eighth reason Matthew Stafford is going to be on his revenge tour. Now, Matthew Stafford last year missed eight games in the 2019. However, when he was playing, he was arguably the best quarterback in the NFL as he was on pace for over 5,000 yards and almost 40 touchdowns while he was only going or on ever or while he was going to average out to have 10 interceptions. So he was on pace to have one of the most efficient seasons in his NFL career, and he is hungry now. He he had the success last year. He smelled the blood in the water, and he's coming back with a vengeance now. Don't forget, last time Matthew Stafford was coming off an injury, it was after that 2010 NFL season, and he threw for 5,000 yards and 41 touchdowns. The last time Matthew Stafford, you know, was coming off an injury, he had his most efficient season, and he was on pace to do that last year, so I can only imagine how not only ticked off he's going to be, but just how, you know, with all the weapons around him, with him having that chip on his shoulder that he needs to come back and prove that he can stay healthy for the Detroit Lions and he wants to make up for lost time last season, he's going to be on a revenge tour. He's going to be playing out of his mind this season, and I would not be surprised if Matthew Stafford puts up 5,000 yards, even with us being a run first and run heavy team next season. Moving on to the ninth reason the Detroit Lions are going to have success in the 2020 season, we brought in a lot of veteran leadership. Now, the Detroit Lions have brought in guys in recent years like Deron Harmon, Danny Shelton, Jamie Collins, Danny Amendola, Reggie Ragland, Trey Flowers, Justin Coleman, and Hala Hala Pelodi Vitae Vitae, who have all won Super Bowls, and they've also brought in other guys that have not won Super Bowls, but they have been to the Super Bowl, or they have been in a lot of big playoff games. So we have a lot of veteran leadership in the locker room right now that have won Super Bowls, that have been to Super Bowls, that have been in big time playoff games, and are not going to, you know, they're not going to shy away when the lights get bright. The Detroit Lions, as a organization, have not had a lot of playoff success, but the players that we have brought in have. The players that we have brought in, all the players that I just listed, they all won a Super Bowl and that is going to help the Detroit Lions to, you know, not only, you know, make the playoffs, but when they make it to the playoffs, these veterans are going to be able to take over and they're going to be able to calm the people down that haven't been to the playoffs before. They're going to be able to calm down the rookies and they're going to be able to say, you know, hey, it's just football. Just go out there and play football. And they're going to make sure that the Detroit Lions, are, you know, they aren't affected. They aren't, you know, super jittery and super nervous for this playoff game because the, the organization hasn't done it a lot. These veterans have been to the playoffs before and they are ready and they know what it takes to win playoff football games. And then the 10th reason, and I believe the most important and the biggest factor for the Detroit Lions in the 2020 season on why they are going to make the playoffs is we have a fantastic schedule for us. Now, now the Detroit Lions play the Chicago Bears twice, the Arizona Cardinals, the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Atlanta Falcons, the Indianapolis Colts, the Washington football team, the Carolina Panthers, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, all of those teams last year were below 500, and I know that doesn't mean anything necessarily because obviously we all see teams every single year go from worst to first. The Buccaneers are one of the most hyped teams in the NFL, so they most likely will be a good team next year. But most of the time, if you're bad one year, you're bad the next. And, you know, we've seen that with the Lions. We saw that with the Chicago Bears for a very long time. You know, all of these teams were 800 or below last year, and the odds of more than one or two of them being really, really good next season are very slim. So the Eastern Lions are not playing a lot of good teams, but it goes even more in depth. Now, the the Arizona Cardinals, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the, the Houston Texans, the Tennessee Titans, and the Indianapolis Colts were all bottom five rushing defenses when it comes to yards allowed. The Washington football team, the Carolina Panthers, the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Tennessee Titans, the Arizona Cardinals, and the Green Bay Packers were all bottom 10 rushing defenses as far as touchdowns allowed. The Arizona Cardinals, the Washington Redskins, the Houston Texans, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Indianapolis Colts, and the Atlanta Falcons were all bottom 10 in passing in passing yards allowed and the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Carolina Panthers, the Bears, and the Green Bay Packers were all bottom 10 in rushing touchdowns allowed. So, I mean, you know, if you just look at it, the Detroit Lions are playing a lot of poor defenses as far as yards allowed and touchdowns allowed. And with our offense, with Stafford coming back healthy and on his revenge tour with the running backs, you know, the running game being new and advanced and being much, much better, you know, we're going to score a lot of touchdowns. We're going to put up a lot of yards and we're playing a lot of defenses that couldn't stop a whole lot last season. Now, you know, obviously that's good for the def or that's good for our offense, but what about our defense? What does our defense have to put up with? Well, the, the Detroit Lions play the Washington Redskins, the Indianapolis Colts, the Chicago Bears, 
Bears, the Cardinals, and the Vikings, who were all bottom 10 in passing offensive yards last season. They played the Carolina Panthers, the Washington Redskins, the Carolina Panthers, and the Chicago Bears twice, as you know, and all of those teams were bottom 10 in passing touchdowns last year as an offense. And moving on to the rushing defense, or moving on to the rushing offense as the Detroit Lions will have to contend with. They play the Atlanta Falcons, the Chicago Bears twice, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are all bottom five in rush offenses as far as yards, or were all bottom 10 as far as rushing yards allowed last season. And they also play the, the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Chicago Bears twice, the Washington football team, and the Atlanta Falcons, who were all bottom 10 in rushing touchdowns allowed. So not only is the offense playing a lot of teams that, did, that allowed a lot of points and a lot of yards, the defense is playing a lot of offenses that did not have a lot of yards and did not put in or not and did not put the ball in the end zone a whole lot. So this schedule is very, very good for the Detroit Lions. We're playing a lot of teams that were very poor last year and that a lot of people expect to be very, very bad next season. So the Detroit Lions, you know, with all of the advancements, with all of the additions and all of the, you know, all all the steps forward that they took as a franchise just by themselves, they're also taking on football teams that, you know, aren't going to be super good next year. You know, nobody expects the Carolina Panthers. Nobody expects the Chicago Bears, the Washington football team, you know, the Atlanta Falcons, the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, none of, nobody expects these teams to be very good next year. And the Detroit Lions could take advantage of these poor defenses and poor offenses and put up a lot of points and stop the offense a lot on those given Sundays, which are, you know, if we put up a lot of points and stop the opposing team from scoring, we're going to win those football games. So, you know, we do have a couple really tough teams next year, but a majority of our games are against teams that were below low 500 last year and had very poor offenses and defenses and this is a team in the Detroit Lions that contended with the with the Kansas City Chiefs the then or the you know future Super Bowl champions and they brought them down to the wire they beat the Philadelphia Eagles who made the playoffs last year they should have beaten the Green Bay Packers who were the first or second seed in the NFC you know they contended with all these really good teams so you know they should have no problem beating these really really bad teams on the schedule with that being said, though, those are my 10 reasons the Detroit Lions are absolutely going to make the NFL playoffs in the 2020 season. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you guys think? Do you guys think the Detroit Lions are going to make the playoffs in the 2020 season? Do you agree with my reasons? Do you have any of your own? Let me know that down in the comments below. But with that being said, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. If there is Lions just before tomorrow, I'll obviously make a video letting every single person know. But until then, I will see you guys tomorrow with more Detroit Lions content. But... That is all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye, guys.